Hello everyone, Bruce with Homestead DIY Projects. Today I'm going to take a piece of 3 8 inch rusted scrap rebar. Somebody had made this into a stake at some point. I just found it. And a piece of an old pipe that you used to hang a ceiling fan from the ceiling with. I'm going to take these pieces of scrap metal and I'm going to make a, one of these. It's a cast iron pot lid tool for my Dutch oven. And I'm going to be using my Bauer Harbor Freight bandsaw, my wore out Harbor Freight four and a half inch grinder, my Chicago Electric 90 amp flux core welder modified, a few other little small hand tools, and some magic. So let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is I've determined that I want it to be about two feet long. Now part of the end of this I'm going to have to curl up to make the hook. But I want to clean this up. So I'm going to take my grinder with a wire wheel on it and just kind of go over and spin this around and clean it up. All right, that cleaned up pretty nice. Now I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark out my two foot. And then I want a, another cross piece to support the lid by the hook. So I think I'll make that, uh, well, let's go with four inches. And then if I need to make it shorter, then I can easily do that. So I'm just gonna take this over to the bandsaw my uh, Harbor Freight Bauer bandsaw. I love that tool and I'm gonna quickly just cut off these two little pieces here. So I switched my grinder, four and a half inch Harbor Freight grinder over to a four and a half inch flap disc from Harbor Freight, just El Cheapo. And this one is happens to be 120 grit and it's half wore out, but I'm going to use that to smooth out the corners where the hook is going to be and then both edges of the uh, cross piece. That it looks like that just to take that edge off and that burr off from cutting it with the bandsaw now I need to set this up in the vise I don't I don't have a forge and I don't feel like building a fire to heat this up I guess I could use a torch we'll see I'm gonna try to just bend it with the vise and a hammer and see if I can't put a hook on the end of this I just marked it an inch and seven eighths just randomly pick the number there to put it in the vise it just it just looks like it'd be about right and then we'll see what happens here I may have to pound on it 
Yeah, let me get a hammer. little more tweaking on that just to tighten things up a little bit I took about three quarters of an inch off of the hook smooth it out just like I did before got the hook shaped the way I want it to be and then this cross piece just so happened that one of these ribs in the rebar was right at the center where I want this to be welded on there so I just took my flap disc and ground a little flat spot then I'm going to rig this up so it'll stay right where I want it to be so I can weld it with the Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder good hopefully you can see those welds I mean no professional but pretty nice and it looks like it's pretty straight on there all right something I didn't anticipate I guess I didn't put enough thought into it the diameter of the hole in this tube versus the diameter of the rebar so I've got quite a gap there that I kind of have to overcome if I'm going to weld this unless I just welded it like that but I want it more or less centered so what I'm going to do is I found some washers with a quarter inch hole which is too small I have to drill it out but I'm going to use a magnet this fits in this pipe basically almost perfectly still a little bit of a gap there but I think I can put some small tack welds and I since I'm a new welder I'm just learning this. I recently learned that if I turn my welder down on low or minimum and a wire speed of about 1.5 and just do a series of tack welds, I can weld this thin stuff without burning through. So I'm going to try that and we'll see if I can do it. Uh, if you're an experienced welder, I'm sure you've known that trick for years. I'm just now learning it though and I, I uh, recently welded some very very thin sheet metal with that method and it wor worked really nice so what I'm gonna do is just put this magnet on my or this washer on my magnet kinda offset it use that to hold the hold the washer in there and then put a tack weld move the magnet put another tack weld and then tack weld 
just all the way around to kind of fill that little gap. We'll see, we'll see how that works out. There's what it looks like. And I got some holes and stuff in there and it's not real clean, but that doesn't matter. I'm gonna drill that out to three eighths of an inch or slightly bigger so I can slip my rod or this uh, rebar down in there and then uh, put another bead of weld around it. And that should be easier to weld because it'll be much thicker piece of metal. Much better. Now I can actually weld that. So we'll put that up there and I'll put a nice fat bead around there and then do the top piece and clean them up and I'll show it to you. I also cut off five inches off my handle. I made it much shorter. This is what the final welds looked like. Where I welded the handle on and I kind of cleaned it all up with the uh, with the wire wheel there's my hook system so let's go out back to the fire pit and I'll show you how it works Here's my Lodge 12 inch cast iron Dutch oven. Slips right into the lid just like that. Use it to dump the coals off. Just to have a look. Or to spin the lid. Or to pick the whole thing up. That'll be a lot better than what I've been doing. If you like the videos, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next one.